Hey guys, welcome back to Close Enough Creations. Today we start part three of the Coolster 500 build. Okay, so the last time we were finishing up our rear swing arm. Since then I've done a whole bunch of stuff off camera and I'm sorry about that. I just got really motivated and went for it. One of the things I did do was mount our radiator. I mounted it with a couple old bushings I had laying around. These rubber bushings are actually from a shock absorber from a truck. So I got two mounts up there and one down here and that lets it jiggle a little bit. I got our reservoir mounted up here with a rubber bushing here too. I'm probably gonna be putting in a couple gussets here just to strengthen that up. We got our fuel tank mounted, it took us a couple tries. Um, I had another bar running right here, which sandwiched this gas cap in between it and it put this whole tank at an angle. So that valve was kind of at that angle. So I put in this X pattern up here, let the tank kind of spin up and fix that angle. So that problem solved and it looks great. Uh, another thing I did was put in our jack shafts. You can see our secondary jack shaft here. Um, that goes down to the other jack shaft down here um, that goes out to our rear sprocket. You can see I've had to modify the rear swing arm. I didn't do that on film either. So I took out two tubes there and I added this one. Um, I took them out because obviously the chain was contacting them. So right now I kind of like this tension. Um, as you you know give it gas, it's gonna get tight there and be loose down here. So I'm probably gonna put in, I don't know, maybe. We'll see how it goes. I might put in a tensioner right here. I've also mounted our injection oil reservoir. Um, probably gonna be putting in a couple gussets just to strengthen this guy up too, but that's tucked right in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is probably put in a couple tubes to just strengthen this up and give extra protection to the engine. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to put in too many pieces up here just because this is the access to remove our engine. So I'll probably put in like a tube up here all right, so I just wanted to catch you guys up to speed because I've been working and not filming. It just kind of works out a little better for me. I can go at a little faster pace. So right now I've got these bars in that I said I was gonna get in. I'm working on a whole bunch of stuff right now. I threw the exhaust in there because I wanted to see, you know, where that was gonna be and I didn't want to have any, you know, tubes interfere with it. I got a couple, you know, I got the shock absorber there and the coil over there just to kind of see where I'm gonna place it and make sure I'm not gonna get in the way of those as well. So right now I'm working on this piece right here. This is a 40 degree bend. And this is gonna go hook, hook down to that and then wrap up here and kind of just stiffen up the rear end. So I'm actually getting pretty confident with my notching and bending. So I'm actually gonna show you guys how I'm doing this on the other piece. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how I've been making these tubes and putting them in, notching them, everything. Um, I've been kind of watching a lot of YouTube videos and I will give credit where credit is due. I've pretty much learned all this stuff from the fabrication series. So thank you for that. If you guys have not seen that guy's channel, you gotta go check it out. He's got a lot of nice vid uh, videos of bending, notching, you know, just tricks of the trade, everything. So what I'm gonna do first here is measure how long of a pipe I need to cut. So I'm gonna be coming out of here, going at a 40 degree bend and then coming in up here. So I want a little bit of extra hanging over and I, I imagine the bend's gonna be like right here somewhere. So I'm gonna cut 22 inches of tube. Okay, so now we can do our bend. I'm gonna mark four inches on the tube here and that's how much my bender needs to hold on to it to put the bend in. So now we can load it into the bender. Okay, so now we're gonna pull back on this and set our preload and set this guy to zero. Tighten that up. Okay, so we're gonna go to 40 degrees. Looks good. Forty degrees. All right, so here's our tube. So this is going to be going in line with this and coming up here. Only what I want is it kind of to sit down here like this. I want the bend just starting right there. So 
something like that, right? So now what we're gonna do is make a mark, and then we're gonna do the same up here. You guys can't really see this, but. All right. So now that we got our marks, we can start marking it up and actually see where our notches are gonna be. So we're gonna have to notch this thing by hand. Here's our marks. I went over a half an inch, and then from this mark here, I know it's gonna be a 90 at this angle going straight in like this. So I'm gonna start right here, and I'm gonna to go to the edge, and trace that way, and draw a line that way. All right, here's the hand notch tube. Came out really nice. Sits on there nice and flush. So you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to make a continuation of this one down here. So it looks like it's lined up pretty good. I made a mark right here, and actually it moved over. So that's our original mark, and it shifted over about an eighth of an inch that way. So now what we can do is measure from here over and do a half an inch mark, and then make our angles and cut it just like we did on this side. All right, here it is, hand notched. Also came out well. Let's see how it fits. Oh yeah, that looks slick. All right, so I got all of my reinforcing tubes in down here. I got that guy up there. I started doing this one to protect this radiator up here, but I, I'm changing my mind. As I did the second one and I'm looking at it, I just, I don't like the way it looks. And I think I'm just gonna risk having this radiator hanging out the way it is. I mean, I don't plan on rolling this thing, but if I do, I'll have to buy a new radiator if that thing touches the ground. I mean, the exhaust is exposed. I didn't completely encase everything, but I like the look, you know, that streamlined look up here, I don't like that sticking out. I think that just looks ugly, so I'll be taking that off and, and risking it. The exhaust is all buttoned up. I use these springs right here. I have four of them, two on the front and two on the back here. So it's pretty nice and tight there. Right now I have just a rubber bushing in between here. Uh, my plan is to kind of just wrap that with exhaust wrap until it's about that thick right there because I want it nice and tight up against the buggy. Um, up here I removed, there was a metal tab, it was a mounting tab, that's gone. This just happened to be one and a half inch. So I, you know, I have that tube. I put a 30 degree bend on it, aimed it down that way when you're starting it here, it's not puking right in your face. Okay, so now that we have the exhaust all mounted up, we can move on to the rear suspension. I've already removed the mount for the rear shock there. Um, this is the shock that's from the Polaris Indy 500. It was gonna go right here. Um, the second I put this thing in, it compressed all the way. Um, so they're not gonna be strong enough for what I need. I ended up picking up these shocks right here, which are off of a John Deere Gator 825i. And you can see the difference in the coil uh, thickness there. These things are way too stiff. I mean, I got maybe a quarter of an inch of travel out of them. And uh, you know, they're meant to have 500 pounds on, you know, in the back of a bed on top of them. So. By chance, I happened to pick up these guys, which are Fox shocks off of a 2016 Razor uh, 900S, I think. I picked them up locally. I paid 125 bucks for all four of them, which is a killer deal. Uh, <laughs> I got lucky. So I think I'm gonna be using these guys. These are the fronts. All right, so I've been playing around with the shocks. Uh, I finally got them to fit. There's not much clearance. Uh, I had to put in these tubes right here. And then I made those mounts there. So you can see that there's not much clearance on the roll cage on that side. And this one has even less uh, down here on the secondary clutch. There's not much clearance there either. So I'm hoping this isn't gonna be a problem. But uh, as far as travel, this thing is great. The mounts look pretty good. I made it out of uh, one and a half inch square tube. And I put some gussets on the back. All right. So I put this here so you guys can see how much travel we're actually getting. Keep in mind this tank is gonna be full most of the time. Uh, so there's probably like 20 pounds there. So there'll be a little bit of sag. Um, 
yeah, I have no idea how much travel we're gonna get. So let's let's find out. Okay, so now we can move on to mounting our rear caliper. Here she is, it's a Nissan caliper off of a 2000 CBR 600 F4. Uh, this is one of the front calipers, that bike would come with two. This caliper is a little small, but it matches our rotor pretty good. This is the stock rotor that came with this axle. Um, the, the stock caliper had one piston, this one has two pistons, so it's gonna be an upgrade. We're gonna mount it with the bleeder aimed up. So on the back side here, and I, we have our mounts over here, so I'll make something that ties into those two mounts and then mounts to the side of our swing arm. Okay, so our caliper is all mounted. I didn't film it, but I'll tell you guys how I did it. I used this as a template, it's just a piece of cardboard. Um, that's this piece right here. So here's the two caliper mounting holes. They're threaded on the caliper, so these are just through holes on this piece of plate. Then I have this angle piece down here and that piece of angle down there mounting it to the side of the swing arm and it's pretty solid uh, I think it's gonna work for us okay guys I'm gonna end part three right here I feel pretty accomplished the whole rear end is buttoned up um, now we can move on to the front end you've probably seen this guy in the background of all of the coolster videos this is a 2007 TRX 300 EX I bought it solely for the front end I'm taking all of that and it's going right onto the coolster. We're getting a whole bunch of upgrades. Those tires are larger diameter, the brakes are better, shocks are better, it's got higher clearance, more travel, everything. So stay tuned for part four. We're gonna be getting into the front end. <laughs>